Welcome to our lecture online. Here is our next example of how to try to find the general formula of a sequence. Notice the numerators. It looks like we have numbers squared. This would be 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so forth. So let's go ahead and rewrite that sequence. So here we have 1 squared over 2, 2 squared over 3, 3 squared over 4, 4 squared over 5, and so forth. So we now know that we can write the numerator as follows. The numerator can be written as 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. And notice that the exponent doesn't change, but the base does change, increases by 1. If we compare that now to the values of n in each case, and here we can say n can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4. So it immediately becomes evident that the value for n is really the base of the numbers in the numerator. All right, that makes it easy. That means the numerator can be expressed as follows. The numerator can be written as n, which is the base, raised to the exponent squared. And it is in, in sequence, so you see that 1 when n is 1, the base is 1, when n is 2, the base is 2, and so forth. So we don't need an offset in that case. What about the denominators? Well, notice for the denominator, this one is 2, this one is 3, this one is 4, this one is 5. So you can see that there's an offset of 1 in each case compared to the value of n. The denominator is 1 more than the value of n which means the denominator can be written as n plus 1, because in each case the denominator is 1 greater than the value for n. And so that means when we combine the two, we can then say that a sub n can be written as the numerator becomes n squared, and the denominator becomes n plus 1. And that would be a good way to write the general equation for that particular sequence. That's how it's done.